how much money do you make? So in our first year of business, we're going to make over like around 1.2 to 1.5 million. <laughs> million dollars? Yeah. How much, how old are you? I'm 19. <laughs> Wait, I didn't even know that. You, you're making $1.5 million this year and you're 19. Yeah. Okay, what do you do? So we build software products. So the one, one of the biggest products we have built is, if you've seen on TikTok, you've seen all these AI Drake covers and all these AI SpongeBob videos. So we actually built the tech for that. And uh, we launched it about eight, nine months ago and very quickly went from zero users to now almost 2 million users. Wait, so like that viral AI Drake song? Yeah, so that was one of our early, early users that, so we found this product, like it was essentially like voice to voice conversion. And we're like, there's so many use cases. We allowed a couple of beta users, about like 30, 40 people. One of them actually made that song, put it onto the internet and- Whoa, yeah. that's really cool. Just to see someone that like used your software and like went hella viral from that. Essentially, yeah. It was like all of our distribution done for us. What's it called? It's called MusicFi. MusicFi? Yeah. And it's still like running right now? Yeah, we, we still have like around 1 million active monthly users, which is pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. Holy shit. So as you've gone about launching this, because how long did it take you to make this? So it took me a week. The story <laughs> of the story? Yeah. Wow. So what happened was um, over the last year, I've spent working at a company called Build Space, which uh, so I was 17, 18, and I was working at this company called Build Space. They were essentially building a school for people to follow their dreams. Rather than the traditional pattern of going to a traditional school and like following a fixed path, imagine you got to work on what you actually wanted to work on, whether that's mm -hmm be a musician or uh, make it make an AI product or become an athlete, whatever it is. Like you want to go do something, how can we help you? So we launched a six week program called Build Space, uh, which was nights and weekends. And essentially for six weeks, we put you in a group with other passionate people about their own ideas. And essentially in those six weeks, we help you go from step zero to step one, which is essentially starting, starting in your idea. Mm. Uh, so during that, I learned a lot from like the, the founder, his name was Farza. And I was really young, 16, 17, 18. And I spent a lot of time just learning how you would scale a startup. They ended up raising $12 million. Nice. And, and I spent a lot of time build, building the startup. In that time, I realized, okay, cool. To build huge companies, you're going to have to have huge missions and huge goals. And I, wa I needed to become an engineer as well. I needed to learn how to write code because everything I did required code back then. And I was just an engineer. But how do I build my own products? You also have to know how to write really good code. So after I left, I decided I'm going to spend the rest of the year kind of just building projects every month. So every month, I just built a new product. Mm. So I was just, I was trying to refine my coding ability. And then one month I came across this research paper, which was talking about the, the vocal style transfer that a research paper in China released. And I realized like this can be used for music. And we, we saw like a couple of random like AI Kanye songs. And this was before the Drake thing. Right. It, it was the first thing was AI Kanye. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. I wonder how people do it. Uh, and I came down this rabbit hole of realizing that people were in this discord called AI Hub which was like a really small Discord at the time, only eight or five or 8,000 people. And I, I remember in, in the chats, people were like, hey, what is a print error? And a print error is like the simplest type of error in coding. And I was like, these are like non-developer people mm -hmm. trying to learn how to convert their voice to Drake or trying to learn how to convert their voice to Kanye. And I realized like, if I just built a simple site with the tech that's already out, that people are gonna wanna use it anyways, cause they're trying really hard. So I spent a week from the idea and kind of just launched it. And a week later, it had 100,000 users. So 100,000? Like, yeah, so from idea to launch, seven days. And then from launch to 100,000 was seven days. Was it free for the 100,000? Yeah, it was free. And I was losing money. So I didn't I didn't monetize it at all. I kind of just released it just thinking like it would be cool. God. And uh, people really thought it was cool. So there was was there any productized version of that, like of AI voice covers? No. So we launched the first thing and that's why it grew so mm. quickly. And also at the same time, we didn't really think about, we didn't know it was going to be like a company. We kind of just launched yeah. it as a side project, thought some people would use it, didn't think it would have high retention. And very quickly we realized it was the opposite. People really liked it. People were sharing it. And it was super simple. It was like select between Drake, Ariana Grande and Kanye West. And you just upload a vocal file and press convert. That was the entire site. But there, we were spending about $3,000 in GPU credits every single day for those first weeks. How did you afford that? I didn't. So that's that's like the craziest <laughs> part. So I, I launched it for fun and I was like, okay, cool. Maybe I'll spend like 5K on it and I'll have it on my resume as like a cool big project mm -hmm. I built. And then very quickly, I realized, okay, like this has gotten to like 10, 12K. I should probably make some back. So rather than like thinking of a really proper monetization strategy, I was like, okay, I'm just going to put like a $1 like paywall, like $1 subscription per month and you can use the tool. Mm -hmm. In the first hour of me launching that, I remember we had like $95 of $1 subscription paid. And by the day, end of day one, it was 2000. I was like, yo, so 2000 people paid a dollar today. 
So I feel like I could probably raise it a little bit more. Um, and so that's what we did. SaaS in 2024 is all about getting your idea to market as quickly as possible. That's why we love no code SaaS. We can use tools like Bubble and Make.com to make an MVP in less than a week and then validate it by bringing it to the market. So no code tools make it possible for anyone to build software now. Exactly how Shopify made it possible for anyone to start an online store. Bubble and Make.com make it possible for anyone to build web apps. So we have a brand new program called The Future Dev, where we teach you how to build virtually any software idea you have, all with no code. So if you want to learn how to get into the SaaS game and build your own software, click the link below and join the WGMI Academy today. How long has it been active? So we launched in April this year. Wow. Yeah. God, God, not damn. too long ago. Eight, eight years? Yeah. Oh, eight, eight months. months. Eight months. Say, yeah, yeah. Sorry when you were yeah, left. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it's been around for eight months and you're already at over 100K a month in yeah. MRR. How did you like, get this out into the world? Like, how yeah. did you market it? So we realized early on that to create any type of viral product, you want to make a lot of controversy. That's essentially okay. you get like both the people that like you talking about you and the people that don't like you talking about you. So when you first launched that AI Drake and Weekend song, it already stirred up a huge fire. Mm. Like people were like, oh, this is going to be great for the music world. And some people were like, yo, this is terrible mm -hmm. as an artist and musician. Um, so that was like good because people are now like coming to this, understand like this is a new thing in the market. Then we ended up basically spending a lot of time with UGC content creators mm. and essentially creating like this crazy affiliate program. If you, people are already posting AI Drake videos and AI SpongeBob and all that already. So we were like, hey, how can we provide them an incentive to post about our platform? Mm. So we said, hey, here's an affiliate link. You're already going to post this content. Might as well make some money while doing it. So they started dra driving traffic to our site and getting paid for every sign up. So we ended up having around 4,000 people make like TikTok pages and just start spamming our links out of there. Mm. Yeah. So that's kind of how they knew it was coming from your platform. Exactly. So when that Drake song went viral, did people know it was coming from your Not app? Not originally. At that point, we hadn't launched like publicly. It was still like just like our early beta beta users. But like a week or two later, we launched publicly. And that's when people started to see like, okay, this is kind of how you can do it yourself if you wanted to. Mm, that's really cool. And so mainly it's just an affiliate program that what was the percentage like 50 percent it was it was not even that high it was 25 percent. but the the main thing that we did was like people were already posting so much ai generated content we just kind of went to these big accounts that had like million they're growing very quickly at the time too right because it's mm -hmm. all over tiktok and we're like hey you're already, you're already going to post this content like we can help you make money while you do it so we're, here's 25 percent. some people were like 30 40 percent. we can do custom custom affiliates and we kind of just gave them the link and that's pretty much it. I think to till this day, like one of our biggest affiliates had br has brought in $50,000. Wow. Yeah. So it's just like crazy. And so he's just posting AI generated content and now he just threw your link in the bio for people exactly. that want to do like, the same. Exactly. He's like, why not? Right. And, uh -huh. and his, t his TikTok page is really well and, and that's it. Huh. Are there any other like, like uh, organic marketing hacks like our viral like loops you've set in there for people to like see? Yeah. So there's, there's two things I would say about like our distribution plan. One was TikTok really early. The problem with TikTok is you get a large amount of traffic, but it's not high quality tra traffic. And what, that, what I mean by that is like, if you're scrolling on TikTok and you see an AI cover, it's not very targeted, yeah. right? It's just like some random person could be just chilling mm -hmm. in their home, see this cover, go to the site, maybe try it, but they're never gonna purchase a plan. Yeah. So we'll get millions of users, or hundreds of thousands of views coming from TikTok, not really converting. But then we started doing long form content as well. We had we had a couple of influencers that made like YouTube videos about us. Like here are some of the coolest AI mm. music tools. One video had 300,000 views and that brought in $30,000 in revenue Damn. in a month compared to like our 300 million views in a month that that only brought in like 20 or 30,000. Mm. So, so the, there was huge contrast. So the density of YouTube. Yeah. What, was the person that posted that like a producer or like yeah, an engineer? Yeah, it, it was a producer, like a music producer. And like teaching people how to do it? Yeah, so essentially what we did, at the beginning we launched as this tool to mess around, kind of convert your yeah. voice into like Drake and Kanye. And then we got a cease and assist letter. People actually don't know this. Yeah, yeah. But three weeks in, we got a letter from Universal Music, Sony Music, and Warner Music. I have it framed in my wall. <laughs> it's literally like, it's actually like pretty crazy to get a letter from all three of them at the, at the same time. And essentially what it said was, hey, you can't offer Drake or Kanye or all mm. these big artists on your site because you're essentially take, you're ta you're selling a product with their branding and you're making money off of it. So we're like, okay, we agree with this. We won't. So that same day, we deleted all these Drake Kanye models, all these big models, and I replaced it with the ability for people to train custom models. That's where our pricing came in. So now mm. people, if they want to convert their voice into these X artists, they kind of have to train custom models themselves and they have to pay for it. So that's kind of how we got around that. So it's taking the accountability off your guys' shoulders in a way. Essentially, so instead of offering it, 
Drake and Kanye, they have to come in, and if they want to do it, yeah. you can't control it. But. Essentially, we made it focused more towards like the music use case. So we essentially what we did was we replaced all the, the the big famous artists with 50 artists that no one knows. Essentially, we took 50 people's voices and we took like 50 other people's voices. So 100 100 voices took 10 minute recordings of each voice. So there's 100 custom voices. And essentially, what we did was this thing called linear interpolation, where you take the model weights of 50% of one model and the model weights of 50% of another model and mix them together. And you essentially create a new voice that never existed. Mm. So you mix two people's voices and create one new voice. Gotcha, okay. And so those voices actually don't have copyright. Like they actually don't exist. Right. So we essentially offer them on our site right now if you go to it. Uh, and artists and producers can use them in their music freely rather than hiring vocalists. Uh, for example, one of the big examples that we use is uh, a lot of times we have male singers that want female background vocals or vice versa. Instead of hiring a vocalist, paying them royalties, and doing all the studio time, now right. they can just sing themselves and convert it to any voice they want. This is super empowering for producers and engineers that exactly. are like trying to like up their skill. Because like you just said, like the hardest part is finding quality talent. But if you have no experience or no money, you can't afford someone to like have someone use their vocals. So now yeah. they can just literally get some of the highest quality vocals and then really show their creativity. I'm on the side that's going to be really positive for music. Yeah, it's, it's very 50-50. What, yeah. what we've realized early on, uh, so we have a lot of users now, but early on we realized the people that were coming to us very quickly were like the A-list celebrities. Like we have a lot of NDAs with really big players. And the reason I thought that was because a lot of these big people, the way they stay ahead, stay ahead of everyone else in their market is by adapting really quickly. So a lot of big A-list celebrities, one, one, one that we have publicly is Louis Bell. Louis Bell is Post Malone's producer. Mm. He's like known as the best producer in the world. So he's been using our pro platform for, for a while as well. And what's he getting out of it the most? So he's been using it to just essentially play with the music ideas, convert his voice into other artists' voices to send them demos and their That voice. makes so much sense. So just a bunch of stuff like that. Yeah, so he could like literally come up with an idea for a song, say, hey, Travis Scott would sound great on this, and just do like a loose version of it. Yeah, if you wanted, right? And then send it send to him. Send it to their team. Yeah, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. It makes a lot of sense. It's like a good practice tool. Good yeah. job, man. Okay, so this was Build Space is basically like this just after school program, or how did you? It's a, it's an online incubator essentially. It's okay. an idea incubator. If you have an idea, whatever you want. It was to do. online. Yeah, it's online. Six weeks online. Uh, you kind of just spend six weeks online, and there's online tutors that kind of give you frameworks and like here's how to distribute anything, whether that's music, your own product, whatever it is. Here's how to think about uh, consistency. Here's how to think about X Y Z. So it's just like a credibility format. Like, is it kind of like Y Combinator in a way? It's, it's like Y Combinator, but rather than for startups, it's for any idea. Mm. And they went through Y Combinator as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, Did yeah. they, you have to pay for it? Did you pay for it? It's free. So we believe that education should be free. And uh, so that was the big, big goal behind starting and we launched it and it's doing really well. It has like 200,000 students that have gone through it now. Wait, are you a part of the build space? Like I, w I worked there for like seven months. Oh, you worked there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So the founder, his name is Farza. He's like 26, 27. Uh, it's actually his birthday today. So he's the person that kind of brought me into this world of entrepreneurship and gotcha. founding. Yeah. Okay, so you were like a part of the team of BuildSpace. And yeah. And you happened to build your own thing in the program as I well. I actually, yeah. So yeah. I, as soon as I left BuildSpace, I was like, okay, I'm going to spend the next couple months kind of building it. Mm. And then I was like, I never even did my own like company's program. So I ended up doing it. And in that, the first time I ever did it, I was like, built this thing. This Do they take like a percentage of the company? They companies? take nothing. So they're, they're like, they're, they don't have a business model in terms of, Right they now. literally just don't make money right now. Right now, yeah. So they, okay. they, just, they just raise like a crazy amount of money and they're mm. focusing on just figuring out how to incubate ideas. But their business plan in the future is going to be around the idea of like getting subsidized education from government. So right now they're partnering with Dubai, mm. like building schools there for entrepreneurship. That's and awesome. Like, yeah, the government kind of pays for wow. it. Wow. Yeah. I want to talk about that. That's really cool. But let's, let's talk about your plan for the future of your app. So you're at 100K a month. You basically launched it really quickly, blew up really quickly. You figured out how to monetize it after getting cease and desist. Yeah. yeah. So what's your plan as you go into the next year, three years? Because you said you wanted to make a big company. You yeah. Big so, idea. So around music, I've this is like, I never thought I would be making a music company. I've never even gone to a concert. So I haven't spent a lot of time <laughs> like in the music world. Yeah. Um, but I've done a lot of research in, around the market and the TAM and like the size of the market. Music tool softwares are like the lowest TAM. Like it's all around like less than a billion dollar market. You're talking like Pro Tools. Yeah, exactly. Like right? Ableton, like, yeah. Ableton, like these these tools mm -hmm. are now worth over a billion dollars. They're all less. And I want to build a, a legit company. Mm -hmm. I realized you can make a lot more money if you not only solve music problems, but also audio problems across other industries, whether that's like audio in, in games, audio and animation. Yeah. Movies. And what I mean by that is like, 
all these characters in games, all these characters in movies have voice actors. Yeah. Imagine you never have to hire a voice actor again. Imagine one person can voice act an entire movie. Right, so that's like something that we're working on. We're also working on the ability for people to generate music for their games and for their movies because they also have to pay for huge amounts of soundtracks, which cost tens yeah. of millions of dollars. Another big thing which I'm really excited to launch in the future, which we already have a beta working, is essentially in all these games and animations, you have so many sound effects. A man's running with like lightning in the background. Someone actually has to go in a studio and make that sound. Yeah. Imagine you were able to just generate that via text, text to LLM and audio comes out with is that exactly what prompts people so you really focus on b2b right now exactly right now right now we want to build this b2b product which is going to be like this for for gaming gaming companies because we have so much interest from them already we just had an investor reach out we just uh invested in our company jaroslav he's the founder of beat saber which is the mm -hmm. biggest vr game in the Love world it, yeah he sold to to um they sold to meta for two billion dollars and he Beat Saber did? Yeah, Beat Saber sold. Two billion? Two billion with the beat. So that's how, like, so music is a $25 billion market, and, and gaming is a $250 billion market, which is expected to double over the next three years. Yeah. Right? It's 10 times bigger. So there's a lot more money to grab, and especially in the audio problems, there's not that much innovation happening. So, yeah. Yeah, audio engineers are like, especially sound effects and sound design for movies, like, that is like an art form in and of itself. Yeah. But it's like so, I can imagine how art it would be to come up with how to make these sounds because they literally physically have to make them in the studio. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So how do you, so you guys decided to raise money. Yeah, yeah. we only, we, so we only took two, two checks. One is from Founders Inc, which is the startup incubator that I worked out of. Mm. Um, previously, Build Space was one of their portfolio companies as well. Gotcha. So the only reason I took money was from them was because I realized they helped me a lot at the last mm. company and I wanted them in my corner. Gotcha. And then we only took it from one other angel who's Jaroslav. Uh, who gave us like 100k as well mm. uh, and he sold his company to beats ever and he was the director of music at meta so it's strategic really strategic right we we haven't needed to raise in terms of for monetary reasons it's more been for connections and uh yeah that's it it's the only reason to raise really essentially smart yeah. Way, yeah and and they came to us so it's like of course yeah that's the best time to raise interesting okay so how long do you think that will take you guys to build where it's like the mvp for the b2b side uh so we already launched a, a beta with one customer yesterday Mm -hmm. And we started working on it two weeks ago. So the cool thing about us is we work really, really quickly. Like we have a team of four people, and since it's a startup, we kind of have like very high expectations on how much, how much of how much code we're gonna write. So like every day we're shipping some new product feature. Like for example, in the next uh, three weeks, we're gonna ship a whole new redesign of the entire site, which is gonna be pretty exciting. So we're always working on something new. This B two B feature should have three pilots by the end of December, and then by early January, late February, like in that in that time frame, we're gonna have it fully launched. Wow. And is it creating like really high quality audio? Because exactly. like sometimes you listen to these AI artists and they might sound a little muffled or like a little watery. So we, we like pride ourselves in creating like the highest quality vocals. Like that's why music producers, that's why we've partnered and worked with big music producers. And we've made the product look very professional. Like it's not focused on like the like clown use case essentially. Yeah. Or the, the, and also the, the cool thing about that is because we're working with producers, it's much higher retention. Like mm -hmm. these guys stay a lot around way longer than the people yeah, that, are just, yeah, that, that are just making AI covers and AI sponge or whatever. But in that sense, we spent a lot of time working on our models and kind of just making them the highest quality. And we expect to launch like another model in the next three months, which takes the, the quality from like, a, let's say 95% now to 97%, which will be the highest by far. This is a really cool idea. Do you have yeah. competitors that are like moving, like are big? I feel like big studios might like try to create something like this. So we, we have competitors that have essentially gone down the angle of like, Let's just offer Drake's voice and Kanye's voice. Yeah. Because of that, they'll grow very quickly because now they're, they are they got the viral element to them. Yeah. But the problem with that is like, okay, you're going to have like all these labels and big guys that have insane amounts of money uh, on your on your neck. And then the other thing is the, the business model is not sticky enough because when you're marketing toward this type of user, they're using it for entertainment purposes. The the user that's using something for an entertainment purpose and the user that's using something for a business or, or work purpose is two different type, two different people. They, there's one that has very high retention and one, if the site goes down tomorrow, they'll, they'll kind of disappear. Yeah. And that's much quicker to make, so you might not really have as a moat as far as the business. Essentially. Market. It's just yeah. a viral product, which which you can make money doing right now. But you're transitioning into the to go B2B gaming side. That's like your big Exactly. Thought. Okay. So, I mean, we're going to have this product at the same time, like this music-focused product, which is Musicfly, but at the same time launch a branch company, which is going to be focused on this gaming aspect. 
how would you go about getting customers like it as far like in the gaming, in the gaming yeah in the, so so what we've done is the two people that invested in us um founders inc the portfolio that the the, the investors that invest in us was this guy named hubert he founded curse gaming uh which mm. which was pretty much a discord competitor at the time mm. a long time ago uh, so he's he's friends with pretty much everyone in the, in the gaming space and then jaroslav also from beat saber they're also really good friends with everyone at meta gaming uh, they they invested in like five or ten other gaming studios. So because of those two connects, we can kind of get like our first 10, 20 customers. And once we get a lot of learnings from those 10, 20, we can kind of scale from there. Scale your sales process? Yeah. Interesting. How would your pricing model scale? Because For B2B customers? Yeah. So for B2B customers, it's a complete, completely different game. Mm -hmm. Like these contract sizes are like tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Uh, this is much different than consumer. So we'll have the consumer angle running. But for gaming, we're going to be talking, like we're talking to a studio right now that that spent fifty thousand dollars on a sound agency to just do all the sound for the game. Imagine we could get them for thirty thousand dollars to have their own in-house tool that can kind of generate whatever audio they needed, and at the same time, uh, the sound agency doesn't do voice characters and stuff like mm -hmm. that. They have to hire another voice actor mm -hmm. and all that. Imagine you could also do that in the software as well. So is this per month or total? To like uh, per year. Per year. Yeah. Wow. So thirty thousand dollars per year to get basically unlimited sounds that you own the rights exactly. to, exactly, and then also voice actors. So that's that's how these agencies kind of work. These game mm -hmm. studios they pay like per year contracts or per game contracts, um, but yeah, we we want to license out per year. So the big Hollywood strikes that were going on, have you have you been like involved in that in any way? Uh, I mean, I would say like one product that like we could one way we have been involved is like the voice since the voice of voice tool kind of works for anything, mm -hmm. you can use it for. We have a bunch of users that even use Musicify just to like convert their voice into like a Morgan Freeman style voice for a movie trailer or XYZ. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, you can kind of replace voice actors right now with our tool. That sense, there may have been a little repercussion, but that was yeah. pretty much it. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. But you're in like this, the AI trend is super like popular right now, especially yeah. like right when you launched probably like the peak of it. Yeah. And so I'm curious, what has changed since like when you launched this to now eight months later, as far as the AI landscape for voice cloning? I think there's a lot more tool, specifically in voice voice cloning. I think like Eleven Labs has definitely like cemented itself as like an yeah. industry leader. Yeah. But that's in text to audio. So yeah. That's their main focus. One specific uh, use. TTS, right? Text yeah. to speech. Um, there's not been a specific industry leader. I think maybe us for audio to audio, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. Um, I'm excited, like overall in the AI landscape, because I'm come from SF, like I spent a lot of time mm -hmm. with all the builders. I've seen a lot more people kind of come in. Uh, in like eight or nine months ago, we would see a lot more Web3 projects that were still like kind of hanging on. Mm -hmm. But as soon as like ChatGPT and all these other M APIs came out, people are just switching their entire companies. I know companies that raised three, four, five million dollars on a Web3 idea, and I just pivoted straight to AI after the ChatGPT launch. So it's pretty cool to see how how quickly people are moving. What do you think about people that made that pivot? I think it makes sense. It's like it's tr it's trends, right? Like people want to catch up to the next hype wave. But I think if you can build a really good product right now, uh, you can make a lot of money in the future. Uh, you, like there's there's a lot of spaces in in the AI vertical that need to have cemented industry leaders, which there aren't. And if you can cement yourself, then you'll get you're gonna make. You think it's too late to get started on one of those? I don't think it's too late to get started if you have distribution. Mm. Like that's the only thing. If you have distribution, you can kind of be any company. What what opportunities would you pursue if Musicify wasn't the main priority? Um, so right now I, I'm really good friend. We're actually doing this. So Daniel, you know Daniel, mm -hmm. and, and and Musa is another friend of mine who's a big like mm -hmm. Instagram TikTok creator. So in Musa's whole content is like, hey, here's how to become an, a TikTok clipper and mm -hmm. uh, use your content. Take a take a streamer's clip, put a GTA clip on the bottom and put it on TikTok and you'll be mm -hmm. created by the creator fund. We're basically building a product that kind of takes long form like Twitch streams and kind of creates clips like that very quickly with generative products. Mm. So that's essentially what we're working on. And the cool thing about that is since Musa has so much distribution in that type of yeah. audience, if we build a tool for that, you yeah. kind of have guaranteed customers. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. What's your tech stack? Um, for dev work, we spend like a lot of time with ty TypeScript, JavaScript. We use Next as our framework, and we also use Supabase as our database. Mm. Uh, and then we don't use, we, for Musicify, we don't use any APIs. Like everything we run locally on Modal, which is a serverless GPU company. Mm. Yeah. And why do you make that point? Uh, so APIs, you can kind of just take another company's product and kind of just call it into your own app. Mm -hmm. There is actually no other company that hosts the model that we use, which is the uh. audio Audi model. So we had to host it ourselves. And because of that, we have a lot of companies that reach out and they're like, hey, I, need, I actually need this use case of audio to audio in my mm. app. How can we get it? And we have to offer them APIs. So you have an API? Exactly. Yeah. We have a closed source API that we give to like specific customers. Like we have a spend limit of like, uh, you have to spend at least 10K and you'll get access to it, but yeah. Mm, that's cool. So people want to basically insert the features you have in your app 
into their own software some way, one way yeah. or the other, they're allowed to. Exactly. But 10K minimum B2B, basically. Exactly. Interesting. That's really cool. You got a good business, brother. Nice. Yeah. But it's so interesting that you probably didn't even see this coming. You said that you were starting a new app every month. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't expect this at all. Like uh, the month before I built like an AI image app. So like, if you remember, like Lenza came out, which yep. your, yeah, I basically exactly, yeah. built Lenza two weeks before, uh, ah. which was really cool. So I, I spent a lot of time just working on these new models that were coming out and, and just kind of launching apps as fast as I could. That was my whole entire goal. So you did you just pick up on like these AI APIs a little bit before the mainstream because you're in San Francisco and because yeah, everyone was talking about it? Probably. I think I think it was a little bit of that, and also like I would spend a lot of time on Archive, which is like mm. actual research papers going on. Really? Yeah. Archive, I was going to ask you that. Yeah. So Archive is literally like so a lot of people will go on in, like social media, and that's fine too. You'll kind of see where trends are going, but the earliest you can spot a trend is like when a research paper about it comes up, right? Like a research paper about vocal style transfer came out and I was like, okay, this is really cool. There's probably something yeah. here. Uh, and then this AI Kanye video came out. When you have those two connects, you can kind of be like, okay, industry advancements are happening. Distribution is happening. When I build a product, there's probably gonna, something gonna happen. Right? So an archive, what's it called? Archive.org? Uh, it's A-R-X-I-V, it, it's .org, yeah. Wow, okay. And then so basically, can you see if it's getting like, I'm assuming a research paper comes out and then you get, is it like an upvoting system like Reddit or how do you like see uh, You can kind of just read it. The, if you want to go for like an upvoting system, the best place to go is Hacker News. Oh, Hacker I love Hacker News. News yeah. Hacker News is like the best. Uh, that's kind of like Archive. It, they take, actually a lot of stuff on Hacker News kind of points from archives, Archive stuff. Archive so, is like literally pure research papers. But how do you, uh, you just, are you, were, were you just sorting by like new? And yeah, like essentially like new. Through it? Like okay. every every day there's a couple of new papers and sometimes there's some really cool ones. Like you'll see like har hundreds of hearts and like, Okay, cool. This so there's hearts. Like yeah, you can like yeah. sort by how popular they are, basically. Exactly. Okay, cool. That's a really, I, you actually just really yeah. taught and me something. And then Hugging excited. Face is the other big one too, right? So mm, Really? I didn't yeah, Hugging really. Face, you can see like the, like Hugging the Face models. is purely made to figure out which models are new and upcoming. Like So ranked. is Archive specifically for AI? Archive is, no, it's for everything. It's like pure research papers. Hugging Face is purely for models, which, yeah. which is AI. And then Hacker News is purely for like tech stuff that's really cool happening. Mm. Yeah. Okay, how do you spell Archive? Uh, a R I X I V. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to look at that tonight. I'm pretty excited now. Got my, I'm all nerding out, but okay. So you basically have the plan. You were making a new app every month. Yeah. This one, how many did you make before you made this one? I think I made five or four, four or five. Yeah. Okay. So you made five. This yeah. one hit it a hundred thousand users, like almost over yeah. in the same first, second week. That's crazy. So you were, you, were you in Built Space at this time? Or you left? Uh, no, so I had left. Okay. So this was five months after I left Built Space. So you left Built Space, one build. app a month for five months. Yeah. Then you launched this one and it hit. That's exactly what Tweet Hunter, if you know what Tweet Hunter is. Yeah, I know Tweet Hunter. I yeah, use Tebow. it. Yeah, yeah, so that's exactly what they did. They were making a new app every single month. And then yeah. this one hit. And Tweet yeah. Hunter hit. They sold it for 10 million. So interesting to see those comparisons. But yeah, so Build Space learned probably the foundation. Yeah, kind of how to run a company, mm -hmm. how to like operate, and also like how to lead a team. That was the main thing. So did life. you learn how to code then too? I, I spent a lot of time actually while working at the company learning how to code as well. Okay. So I, I learned how to code in the span of like a year and a half. Nice. Like entirely from no code to like, I know how to actually build products. And you feel like you're like a pretty strong developer at this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was purely just because like, I, I was like, I know that if I want to create like really big products, I need to understand the products themselves. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of talk about like, hey, you can use no code platforms, but the amount of customality mm -hmm. you need for building a great product, mm -hmm. you need to understand what you're mm -hmm. doing. So I spent a lot of time. Interesting. We're proponents code. of no code, but I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah. So are all the people on your team, you said you have four people, are they all developers? Exactly. Engineers? Yeah, yeah. so four engineers. I would. We have four or 5,000 affiliates that do content for us. Oh my God. Yeah, so that's the other thing. So like, I wouldn't say they're on our team, but we have like this one 16 year old kid that kind of manages all of them. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Is it just like in a Discord server? Yeah, it's like this like this kid, This I pay him $500 a month, but from the beginning, like this, the, the month that I launched it till now, he's kind of just been managing all of our affiliates for us and he's done an awesome job. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Was it on Discord though? Yeah, it was on Discord. And what do you guys use for your affiliate program? We use a software called Tolt, T O L T.io. Why do you use that one? So it's great for essentially, uh, normally for referral links you kind of have to like set up emails and yeah like you have to send an email verification then you have to approve it mm -hmm. like we didn't want to deal with that we wanted people to kind of come on uh log in and then have their own link design their own link whatever it is and, and ready to go so there's a soft mm -hmm. software called told which makes it really easy for people to make their own affiliate links i think it's one of the coolest companies in the space right now not a lot of talk about the company it's one of my friend's companies but they're doing great 
Yeah. What's the like their unique proposition? The u- unique proposition is essentially anyone can come on and make an affiliate link in less than five minutes. And, and it's a track, oh. and they also have a dashboard to track like leads, referrals, like leads as in how many people converted, which plans they converted on, mm. and then also referrals, how many people clicked on your link and didn't buy anything, and how many people signed up. So a really good dashboard. Is it me. mainly for software or is it anything? You can kind of use it for anything that has a Stripe checkout. Stripe. So, so okay, it literally uh, hooks onto the Stripe uh, endpoint at the end, but yeah. That's really cool. Okay, I'm probably going to use that. <laughs> yeah, Tolt is really good. Like, Tolt, I would really, T-O-L-T. Really like it. T-O-L-T.io. Okay. It's, I would say, one of the best companies I've seen in the last year. Okay, great. So left build space, new company every five months. This one hit 100,000 users. Your distribution was basically affiliates. Like yeah. it went viral, kind of, you kind of caught a trend early, I would say. Yeah. Then you had affiliates to put fuel on the fire. Then that's kind of established you, gave you the capital to think bigger. Yeah. Did you have four people from the start or did you bring those no, people No, no, so on? it was just me for like, the, uh, me and like one person for like the longest time for like maybe four or five months. And then we slowly brought in more people because we're like, dude, we're just like saving like so much money every month. Yeah. Like we should start spending it, you know? Yeah, no cost. And then yeah. you brought in, so you got two more developers. Are yeah. they partners? Are you the... Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm the founder, and then we brought in two, like, part-time, co- like, engineers, essentially. Gotcha. Great. So you have four people, had some money, then you brought in two strategic investors because you've had the bigger B2B play exactly. in mind going after gaming. So you got the Beat Saber guy, and then founder... Founders Inc. Founders Inc. Startup and it. Cool. And so that was literally just to help so they could open doors, give them a little piece of the company. And then that is your vision for the next year is just build out this gaming side and help. Yeah, I, I, in unison, I think it's, it's two things. So one is like, I don't think you can build a billion dollar company in music right now. And the main reason is because not enough people know how to mu- make music. And because of that, yeah. like that essentially comes down to one main thing, which is like these music softwares are really hard to use. For mm-hmm. example, if you look at like Adobe Premiere, a lot of people can't use Adobe Premiere. Yeah. That's for images, right? But when Midjourney came out and allowed anyone to make it images, like the market for image and art grew mm-hmm. like, 5x yeah if you do the same thing for music which allows anyone to convert their voice into instruments or voice into other vocals and make music with just their mm. voice or or simpler tools you can kind of grow the market in one way so that's one part of the equation we want to grow the market of music for anyone to make music at the same time we want to start building out the, the gaming aspect interesting that really does make sense that you the tam will grow because of your technology exactly where people will feel like they can make quality music yeah and then the gaming side makes tons of sense music is like 50 percent of the experience so yeah you'll save them a lot of money and time. It's a no-brainer. So, are you busy? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. I spend a lot of time, like, working, to be honest. Like, I think, I, I just got an aura ring just because, I, like, I sleep so little nowadays. Like, really? I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I spend so much time kind of just working on random stuff. I'll wake up in the middle of nights, literally sometimes, which is random ideas that I'll have to write down. Mm-hmm. And this may not just be specific to Musicify. This may be, like, oh, I have this friend that has this crazy... D- like, for example, I have a friend that owns the domain stocks.ai. Mm. And, like, last night I woke up with the idea of, like, dude, if he owns the domain stocks.ai, I have a friend who's, like, one of the biggest stocks in- influencers. Imagine we just built a software product that kind of helped people analyze stocks. And just, Interesting. And it's just, like, random ideas kind of just come to me. So what yeah. ideas... Because you... I'm sure focus is, like, probably it's the very hard, yeah. biggest thing you have yeah. to focus on. <laughs> yeah. Because you have, like, now that you have success, a lot of people are going to come to you with, like, a lot of cool opportunities that... A year ago. Especially being like the one of the only devs in the kind of creator space. A lot of people come to you with like ideas like, hey, I have like 5 million followers. I want to build this. Can you help me? Like a bunch of inbound. So you have to kind of stay really focused. How do you justify? Like you said you started a side project with some other people. Yeah. So what, so what I'll do if I do anything like that is I'll basically b- b- bring in my connects. So I, since I'm a dev, I know a bunch of developers. Gotcha. So I'll be like, okay, if you want to work with me on something, my, my friend XYZ is going to work on it. I'll kind of just hop in once or twice Oversee every it, month, yeah. but that's it. Yeah. And and it's been working great. So that's what I'm doing with Musa. That's what I'm doing with a couple other people as well. So you're kind of like the project manager, exactly. But finding the d- talent yeah. and then overseeing. And, it. and at this point, it's like I don't really do anything other than when they ask me for something. But then I'll take like a percentage in the, in the project. What are some cool models or cool research papers that you've seen that would be interesting products, but you just obviously don't have the time or like well, you I got a random idea at night yeah, like, that'd I mean, be great, but I can't. I mean, Mistral came out with a new model like last week, right? Mistral uh, is like the new text-to-text model that's almost as good as GPT-4, but it's all open source. Like, you can download the weights on your own computer and run it locally. So, with that, you can kind of do anything. And it has a, a po- Apache license, which means you can use it for a monetary gain. Um, so, you can build a bunch of products. For example, one of the ideas I think I would build right now if I had the time was a, a mobile app that runs these seven, like, Mistral's model. So essentially now when you have no internet, no Wi-Fi, no service, you can still have an LLM running on your phone locally 
uh, to do whatever, essentially. So it's basically like an offline large language model exactly. that you can like download to your computer. Exactly. And if wow. you if you build an app around it, right? Let's let's say five dollar app that people can download it. That means they have internet access forever, right? Because essentially Damn. it works without it, yeah. it runs locally on your phone. I, didn't Stability try to do this or? It's, it's just not as good. It's not as good. Mist Mistral is by far the best model that came out, and it came out literally last week. So this is like wow. brand new. Yeah. Is it M I S T R A L? Uh, M I S T. Yeah, Mistral. Yeah. Mistral. Huh. And Apache license just means that they're allowed to monetize it. Exactly. Like for example, Llama uh, yeah. is like Facebook's. Facebook's model, but Llama doesn't have an Apache license, so you can't monetize it legally. So if you built an app with Llama's model running on a phone, you can't. Are there any like good text to video models yet? Like that you've uh, seen? There's a couple. I mean, there's a couple of really good lip sync models, which are like mm. take an English video and turn it into Spanish. Yeah. Um, so those models are getting really good, which are called the wave to lip models. Text to, text to video models are not great yet, but there's a company called um, uh, Pixel, which is make, making really good models as well. And there's another company that doesn't do text to video, but does video animation, which is called Wonder Dynamics. Mm. I don't know if you've seen it, but mm -hmm. it's essentially you can take a camera and kind of record someone and and mask them with a the character, and it's really high definition, really mm -hmm. good. Um, but over the next year, like those are the models that, are, so like text to image kind of improved the most this year, yeah. but over the next year, text to audio and text to video are gonna improve a lot as well. Yeah, text to video seems the most interesting to me, just because it's gonna like change the ad creative space. Yeah, I mean. Like, Midjourney's already done it. I would say in a year from now, like there's gonna be a lot more fake videos and fake media out there as well, just because of how much 100%. text to video. You looks. have any idea how to verify deep fakes or to stop deep fakes? So there's, there's a couple of companies that are now spawning, and that's, um, one of my friends built this company called Deep Fake, which kind of just detects like if, or it's called Deep Truth, they detect if there's deep fake audio, uh, mm. but it's very hard to detect still to this day. How could you? Do you yeah, it's know? very, it's very hard. Like to the human here, you can't tell. Mm. But like, if we're, like as models get better, there's a lot of talks in governments that hey, we're gonna have to start labeling outputs of these models with some sort of like uh, graph that we can understand and mark out as this is not real, this is real, because there's a lot of political issues that are gonna be caused. There's just no way that there's just no way that you're gonna be able to hold people accountable to that. Like anyone's gonna be able to copy the model and exactly, make one right. without that. So. And, and like the, the cat is out of the bag, right? Like all these open source models are out and they're never gonna be deleted again. Yeah, my theory is blockchain and NFTs can solve this, but we'll save that lecture for yeah. another time. IPFS, but, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but zero knowledge proofs. I mean, that's what uh, Sam Altman's doing with WorldCoin. So I thought if he left, got kicked out of OpenAI, he'd go over there, but I don't think that was ever gonna <laughs> the happen. World, WorldCoin is up this week. Like, to 20, 30 percent. The coin itself. Yeah. Yeah. Or World ID, I guess, is like what I'm referencing. But World Coin, yeah, it's a great project to look into. But yeah. not financial advice. I'm one of the people that pivoted from Web three to AI. Yeah, I've heard, heard it. Yeah. But I'm still. I think Web three technology is the most important, like technology. I think the, the the biggest problem that happened over the last. So before Build Space, I used to work at a Web three company. We were building like crypto ETFs essentially. And really? Yeah. So like when I was 15, 16, we raised two million dollars, and the, the the idea was essentially like. In, in the S&P 500, you can re invest in one stock and invest in car the, in t on the entire market. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to do the same thing in crypto. With invest in one That's pretty big right now. Yeah, <laughs> right? Like, that's the narrative. Right? And um, so it was like, the idea was like basically building an ETF. The problem that we came to realize was like right now or like back then, even till this day now, the, the problem of adoption is still the main thing. Right? Mm -hmm. It's very hard for a non-crypto person to become a crypto person. 100%. And, when, and, and the people that do become crypto persons, you're like really deep into it, you mm -hmm. know? There's no like middle ground. You it's can, either zero or yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. It's like you right? have that light bulb and then you're like a maxi. Yeah, either people. either you're like, I don't invest in crypto or you're like, oh yeah, Solana, Ethereum, mm -hmm. like X, X, Y, Z, I have these NFTs, right? So. Yes, yeah, so I, I guess people are too harsh on pivoting from Web3 to AI. The reality of the fact matter is you need to make money and you need yeah. to survive. And right now it's too early to the technology. It's like trying to create an iPhone when you don't have Wi-Fi. Like it just won't work. I agree. And I so agree. once the technology scales, then I think NFTs are the most important technology in the next decade for a variety of reasons I won't go into, but I think it's too risky. I think my billion dollar business, I already have it in my mind. It's blockchain based, but it's just too risky to bet. Do I build on Ethereum? Do I build on Solana? Do I build on Matic? Do I build on AVAX, Cosmos? You don't know which one's going to hit mass adoption. Yeah. And so there's too much market risk right now to bet on that. Yeah. I think, I think once, once we see more of the mass audience kind of adopting the, the tool, then it's a UI problem, I think. Yeah. UI, UX over anything. Yeah. Too many people get drained. So it's too early for the tech, too slow. Block, no one's paying $10 for a gas fee for coffee. So. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> actually, I, I was a big 
crypto maxi but then when ai happened i switched over so yeah. i used to actually go to like solana breakpoint in lisbon so i went you were for, into it i went for two years in a row so like wow. i've met with anatoly and raj and i was a solidity dev before that so mm. i was super deep into web3 mm -hmm. like that the reason i pivoted was because i realized like okay cool like there's this problem of adoption I, like i should probably find a way to make money really quickly and all these new models are coming out so it made it really easy to kind of just move over because everyone is adopting it way quicker mm -hmm. and it seemed to have like much more util utility it's uh, ready today. Yeah, it's like, ready today. There is actual value that applies to every business immediately now. Yeah. But four years ago. But the long-term effect, I yeah. think, of crypto and Web3 is going to be way bigger. Do you um, not? So I think that this, uh, since you're, I didn't know that you were into Web3. That's yeah. awesome. So I'll actually nerd out with you on this. I think that uh, the way Elon has forced everyone to ver get verified on Twitter, how he changed it to just using your bank account and the name on your bank account to prove that you're a human. I think that NFTs with World ID we'll do that across the entire internet. So you have to like connect your wallet that proves that this is you, a real human with yeah. an NFT. Have you gotten scanned by the way? Not yet, no. Yes, yeah, so I've gotten scanned. Wait, for real? Yeah. What's so, the process So like? my friend, uh, Alex uh, Masmej, he has, he literally, so he used to work at, his, his roommate works at um, WorldCoin, or World, mm -hmm. and he has the actual orb in his living room. Like it's really? like a silver orb. Do you trust it? Uh, dude, it's, it's like the creepiest looking thing. Mm. And it has like a little circle in the center. It's like a black circle. And he's like, yeah, bro, just put your eye. Like, you'll make $50 easily. And you just put your <laughs> eye, and it scans it. It scans your iris, and then it just sends you $50, $50 to your credit. Uh, your, yeah, that's your scary that they pay you to do it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. And What's, then, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I was saying, like, the ID app is pretty sick as well. Is uh, it in your Web3 wallet, or do they have their own wallet? They have their own wallet. And can you put other assets in there, or is it just, like, standalone? Just, just that right now. Do they, will they allow you to transfer it to, like, a MetaMask? You can transfer it. You, you can transfer, transfer, transfer it, bro. That's so. Yeah. What happens if you lose it? You know, I, I mean, it's just like kind of like just for setting it up. You're, it's mm -hmm. not like you need it. You don't need the currency. No, but the actual ID itself. Oh, you can't lose it. It's like attached to your. It's like an NFT, and essentially, if but, you lose it, but you, you can't transfer it wallet to wallet. You can't transfer it from like the the NFT. You can't transfer, but the currency you can. Yes. Okay. So the NFT stays in their wallet. Yeah. So they're gonna try to make like the wallet that everyone has to use. They, in a there, way. There's already been demos of it. They're like, they just launched the ability for you to connect your Discord to it to authenticate it. Really? Yeah. Like yeah, they launched a bunch of connections like mm. last week. Yeah, I think that's like one of the most important technologies right now because yeah. that's how you stop deep fakes. If you make everyone connect their real identity to their accounts on social media you're going to think twice about what you post and if you post a deep fake of a presidential candidate doing yeah, something people will know, yeah. you're going to get like you'll get defamation immediately and so that'll really and if it's not from a verified account you will no longer trust it like that has to be the only way to stop deep fakes yeah and so i think ai is going to like expedite the adoption of web3 that's my assumption i think so too i, th I think it's going to have it's going to be the reason that people have to move have on to, to do it yeah right that makes a lot of sense is world id last question we'll talk about this because i know this is a very niche group of interest <laughs> here but i do think there's like a, it's these are just future technologies and that is a demographic of people and so yeah. it's not pivoting it's just what's the interest right now based on the advancement of the technology but do you know if world id is is it its own blockchain i'm not sure world coin okay i'll, uh, I'll need to sure. look into I'm that then sure. okay well that was a fun conversation not yeah. probably the most fun i've had you should get scanned though i should yeah, i should want scan. to i think the only reason i trust it everyone i always see like conspiracy theorists talk about mark of the beast and that yeah. this is like whatever you're they're going to steal your data but the zero knowledge proof side it makes know, sense yeah. you know what those are yeah, yeah. ZK can you Rolo explain them ZK. explaining it is like the, <laughs> the hardest, hardest thing. thing i would say like the example that people have given to me is like imagine you could prove something without actually showing it's mm -hmm. real so like the example people use is like imagine you have a number behind or like a whole string of numbers behind like a, a wall and like you have a small circle in the wall and you can kind of just see the one number but there's proof that the rest of the numbers are there and with that there's proof that there's something behind the wall and it's identifi identifiable. It's just, it's hard to explain, but that's yeah, kind of like how it's basically they put, you put, you scan your eyeball in here yeah. and that eyeball is associated to your ID, but then it goes through like a mixer and then no human can see. It's only like one way transferring. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's like, it basically the system knows what is what, so it can verify who is who, but no human can look at the back end. You data. can't go backwards. Exactly. Yeah. You can't, you can't see it, yeah, whatever. So yeah. <laughs> zero knowledge proofs. That's the reason you want to trust IDs. And if yeah. you want digital IDs, you want NFTs and you want zero knowledge proofs, not from the government. Okay. Just making that very clear. So sorry. No worries. Back to, <laughs> back to, your, back to AI software. Cause that's what most people are interested in right now. So what if like, I just like giving people ideas on like what you would, what are some of the most impressive models? So you said Mistral, right? Mistral is really good. Uh, I think there's a bunch of like, even Stable Diffusion's model, like um, 
two point two point one came out, which is really good for text to, text to image. I think all these models, if you if you have distribution for a specific angle, let's say for example I'm an influencer and I have like a huge like platform that has a, a bunch of followers about dogs, right? Like mm -hmm. I post Instagram pictures about dogs. I have like a million followers. That's my entire account. I would maybe build like a a text to image generator of the custom pictures of your dog, right? Mm. Like using Stable Diffusion's base model, hey, we'll fine tune your dog's images on this and you can now generate your ima images of your dog in Paris, in, in France, wherever you want, you know? Like mm. building these custom use cases for these open source models with your specific distribution angle attached to it. Interesting. Yeah. I think just combining all of these in unique ways is a big opportunity. Now, do you think that like these are like very short lived. Do you think OpenAI is going to like Amazon basics all of these people and really yeah. like take it away? Uh, I think like a lot of companies would die tomorrow if like one API got turned off. Like, mm. for example, um, if OpenAI died tomorrow, like I would say like 30, 40 percent of the startups in the world right now, like AI focus would just die because they all rely super heavily on one API. The other thing I, I do, do mean, to, mean to say is like, I don't think that they'll just disappear tomorrow. I don't think OpenAI is going to be able to build like these really specific use cases. For example, I have a friend that uh, that built like a, an Excel plugin that's used for dropshippers to like kind of generate scripts and, and thumbnails and, and a bunch of things for essentially their dropshipping stores using like OpenAI and Stable Diffusion and a bunch mm -hmm. of products. And like, it's a very specific use case. It's for dropshippers to generate like uh, categories and generate the, t the titles and prices and images of new products. You can't really, like OpenAI is not going to go build that as a new feature, right? Like these very specific use cases, I think there's still going to be companies that are going to be reliant on their API and build really, really good flows. And then if you do that, you can make a lot of money still too. Interesting. Okay. How do you see the AI landscape changing like Google search? Like it seems like, I think OpenAI, you're in San Francisco, so I yeah. assume you actually like see more of the stuff than me. So they said they wanted to make a phone, correct? Like that's open AI. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think so. Every, everyone says that. And so do we see it just becoming like, like how does SAS exist? If open AI makes it like a phone with no apps, it's just like you're talking to it through the chat GPT interface. And then whenever you ask for a function, it just automatically routes it towards a SAS. So do you see like, Basically, what I'm trying to ask you, do you see the SaaS market growing, meaning there's more room for more micro apps, or do you see the, Sa the SaaS market shrinking, meaning less apps are doing well, more work? I think there's definitely going to be a lot more micro apps being built just because uh, like, the entry is now way easier. Like, the entry into that market is way easier. You can use a lot of these LLMs actually to help write code with you as well. Mm -hmm. And also you have Bubble and, and all these other like no-code tools as well that can help build tools. Um, I think micro tools are gonna grow like 10X over the next year, just because I know a lot of my friends that didn't know how to code a year ago and still don't know how to code as much today, but they're now able to build like really simple apps just with like the help of AI or like tutorials on the internet using Bubble. Um, the, that being said, I'm not sure about like the bigger bigger companies. I think there's gonna be a couple of really big industry leaders that kind of solve a lot of problems. Like for example, OpenAI is one of them, right? Solving a lot of the text-to-speech or text-to-text -text problems. They even solve text-to-speech. They, they launched a new text-to-speech model a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago, which is like battling 11 labs, right? So there's going to be companies that kind of just take over whole industries just because they have one thing that others don't have, and that is compute. If you have GPUs, you can kind of do anything. Mm. OpenAI has the most GPUs by far of any, every, any private company right now. And because of that, they can train these really crazy models and also have all these APIs available that don't crash because they have so much compute. Compute is the biggest problem. If you have compute, you can build a big, big software company. And a lot of people won't be able to get that much compute right now. And because of that, they'll start, there's, there's going to be way, way more micro apps than bigger apps. Okay, so if you had to break down your philosophy to someone who's just trying to break into their first SaaS, because yeah. you're in San Francisco, your success at your age is absurd, by the way. So really cool to meet you, bro. But the fact that you started so young, you're in the right environment, you went through build space, you're seeing like all these best practices from the get-go. How would you suggest the everyday person, maybe a 20 year old that's just getting started, they don't know how to code, but they want to start a software. Now it's more accessible. Yeah, what would I think the playbook that for that is really, really simple. Like if you don't know how to code, I wouldn't go say, go learn how to code. I would, I would first go say, find someone that has distribution. Cause if you have distribution, you can sell anything. Mm -hmm. Like if you have a million followers, you can probably sell a, a really sick, like dirt dirt brand. You <laughs> yeah. can literally sell anything. That's yeah. the craziest part. So f go first find distribution. This is what I've been doing for all my new new projects. Then I'll find 
like once I have distribution locked in, let's say I have a, I have a friend that has like 5 million followers that does music content, then I'll go find a developer. Finding a developer is actually easier when you have something that they want, which is distribution. All developers want something that they, they could just get to 100,000 users very quickly. And with, when you have distribution, you have what they want. Uh, find a dev that's going to be willing to work on your project with you. In, in SF, because of who I am, I have like a bunch of connects in that space. But if you can go into like a bunch of these Discord communities, you can find devs that are working on random projects that are kind of useless. And you can just be like, hey, look, if you want to become a millionaire, I'm going to help you do it. I have distribution locked in. I know how to build good products. You, if you have a good pr track record as well, that's, that helps. And then if you, ha if you have the dev on your side as well, you can get your dev and your distribution to work together. And that's how you can build something that kind of scales right now. What Discord groups are you referencing there? Um, there's a bunch. There's one called Founder Founders Inc. has its own Discord group, which is super dev focused. But it, even if you go on like Discord and look look up just software engineer or AI discords, AI Hub is another one. AI Hub has like hundreds, like thousands of devs just in there, just like writing code every day. And like any of them can build apps like these in like a couple days. But the thing is, they don't have any any reason to because they don't have any distribution. A lot of devs actually don't spend a lot of time like distributing their products. They spend a lot of time building, and because of that, they don't have that innate skill. And there's it's. It's hard to find distributors, but it's also hard to find devs. But when you get them both together, that's when they become a superpower. Very interesting. It seems like developers have this ability to build anything, but they lack the ability to understand what people want. And yeah. then people that have large audiences they can't understand build, what people yeah. want, but can't make a product yeah, so for their life. You just have to become a deal maker. That's mm -hmm. essentially it. Oh, so you're saying don't even you're saying be the middle like find a distributor. Yeah, find a developer. I mean for that's what that's what I do for my new projects and that's what I would recommend. To like, leverage. Yeah, if I would were to start tomorrow with no experience in anything, that's what I would do. I'd find someone that has distribution and then I would find someone that can build products and kind of just work on something together and leave the project. I actually really agree with that. It's yeah. like why even maybe spend a little bit of time learning how to code so you can communicate to them. Yeah, just know maybe understand. Spend, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, spend a little it. time marketing so you know how to talk to an influencer. But if you could just really see a hole in the market then go out make a list of 10 influencers that might be a good fit for this. Send out some messages, hey, I have an idea. And the, and the cool part and is, the cool part is, like, all these influencers are trying to build software products right now. Why do you think that is? Well, that's because it's, like, the most sustainable business model right mm -hmm. now. Like, it doesn't, like, YouTube and all these other content, you're, you're on another platform, right? You, you're a slave to a platform. But with, with SaaS or your own platform, you can kind of go to sleep tomorrow and know that you have an expected amount of money coming yeah. in next month. Uh, and because of that, there's a bunch of influencers that are trying to get into software. And because of that, if you can go to an influencer and be like, hey, uh, I know you have this type of brand. I can help you build a software product in the next two months if you want to work with me. And most likely than not, if you hit up 10 people, maybe one will say yes. If you hit up 100 people, maybe two will say yes, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever the, the number is, find the people that say yes. Use that as leverage to find your actual dev. You don't have to have a dev for it. Mm -hmm. Just use the leverage, find a dev, and now you can actually build something. Devs are quite easy to find. Yeah. I know that if you're not technical and be a little intimidating, you don't really know how to like find them or ask them questions. Yeah, but everyone thinks it's very hard, but it's, they they all are in cer certain pockets of space. You just have to find the pocket. Where does a dev live? Where does a dev learn? Basically, uh, I would spend. They would spend. They spend a lot of time on these research papers. If you go on these research papers, you can see the comments. If you go on mm. Hacker News, you can see comments. Like all these places are people that are writing code and they're giving their thoughts. GitHub is another one. There's a but like Hugging Face is the biggest one. I would say if you spend a little bit of time on Hugging Face, you would find hundreds of devs. And then the place that I find most of my devs is on Discord. I'll just be hanging out in Discords and I'll be, I'll drop a the, the test that I usually use is like I'll drop a bug in the chat. And <laughs> if someone solves it and I'm like, oh shit, okay, cool. Good to know, right? And then I'll have them in my like uh Rolodex if I need them for something. That's actually really smart. Yeah. You, you know devs love to like flex their ego and be like, exactly. I'm gonna solve this problem. Exactly. exactly. That's so funny. That's really smart. Good advice. Yeah. Okay, so would you say software is like like a first business like a good first business or is it harder how would you describe it i would say it's like if you kind of understand like at a certain point it's a really good business and then once you get to like 50 to 100k 200k it gets harder to scale because it requires so much more persistence and building a really good product the other thing is like solving retention problems is really hard yeah. to scale like if you make one change with the button or if you make one change with like the login page on your UI, maybe your attention will drop by 5% or increase by 5%. Mm. So what, at scale, it gets really hard, but that's where decision-making comes in. I would say anyone can start a software company today if they just know how to make deals. And that's bring distribution, bring, bring devs together. Uh. Uh, and I would recommend it because there's a lot of money to be grabbed in the space just because all these open source models are being literally released like these mm. months, these weeks. And if you can take them quickly and put them into specific use, like, 
use case quickly, you can make a lot of money. So how much is it about launching first to capture market share and then monopolizing that space than maybe taking your more, more time trying to really refine a product and launching six months later with a more polished product? Um, I would say like iterate in the wild. That's like the biggest thing. Iterate in the wild. I like that. Yeah. I mean, even at BuildSpace, we have this belie- believe believing we have on our sweaters. It says GTFO. Get the fuck off localhost. Localhost is essentially like when you code on your computer, it's like a local computer. So you're coding locally. So mm. never, never code purely on your co- lo- localhost. Like when you have your first iteration of the app, launch it into the wild and then keep iterating on top of it. That's what we did with Musicify. I, I would have never launched Musicify if I wanted to build like a software app and have a, like lo- login, authentication, securities, mm-hmm. and all that and launch it. We launched it into the wild, saw what the problems were, and kind of just kept iterating really quickly. So uh, you might have touched on this, but I just want to make it really clear. You didn't have distribution when you started Music 5 no. at all. Like no. you were just a solo dev, basically. Exactly. So how did you go about getting the, those first what was it 40 beta users? So the way I found those people was there was the Discord called AI Hub, mm-hmm. and there was a bunch of people that were trying to essentially use these yes. models to make music. Right. Okay. And I realized they weren't devs because of the way they were talking right, about right, the code. Right. And I was like, okay, cool. Here's a site that you can kind of use this tech. And they were giving me a bunch of feedback like, hey, this is great. Like, it would be cool if you had this, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And in the span of a week, I was like, okay, cool, this is ready. And I launched it out. And even... The ver- first version, it didn't have any authentication. Like, there was no login. There was no rate limiting. So that means if people just kept pl- pressing remix, yeah. they would just keep calling our API. And that's why there was so much more cost yeah. in the first couple of weeks. But because be of careful. those mistakes, you can kind of move quickly because you learn your mistakes in the wild and you iterate quickly. That's really interesting. So you literally just went to found a Discord of people already doing this, musicians yeah. trying to make AI music. And the way I found the, the Discord was like, I was on one of the AI Kanye videos and on the bottom was like, um, made with this Discord or in this Discord. Some sort of creator, distributor, content creator had a community around this topic already and you just wanted to say, hey, would you guys like to try this out? It yeah. might help you. And then and then I realized like, okay, cool. If I'm going to build this, I'm gonna, I want to have at least some guaranteed distribution. Yeah. So I just told the founder of the, the Discord, I was like, hey, I'm going to build this out. Uh, it's going to be really useful to a lot of people in this Discord. It would be really cool if you made an announcement about it. And mm. it was like, sure. So the week oh, later. Just down. Yeah. And that, and I think that was the biggest like push because as soon as he announced it, like we had like 100,000 people or 10, 10 20,000. Interesting. Quickly go to the site. That's so smart. Yeah. I think a lot of people look past this, but how we think about it, if we have a software idea, immediately we're going to create a Discord community around the topic that people that want that Discord server yeah. want. We're going to create a newsletter, create media assets, Instagram accounts, TikTok theme pages around those topics and then you kind of just present your product naturally after you, yeah. as you're building it but kind of need more have you ever tried to build like distribution yourself or did you just like part- build my own industry yeah, yeah so i did when i was younger and i realized like it comes way more down to consistency yeah and i just didn't have the time it, it's a full-time would, job yeah it's it's like and it's it's also repetitive it's like doing the same thing over and over again like i wanted to solve different problems over and over. that's why i think dev work came more fun to me because it was like every time there was a new model or there's new something new to kind of do so because of that, I really liked that. Like, I think there's two types of people. Some people that like distributing more and some people that like working on products more. I'm interested now that uh, you're at that 100K mark and you're going B2B, how, how would you, that, does that kind of contra- not contradict, but it's not this, it's not in line with distribution as much, is it? Or it's just a more no, dense- No, so this is more, more like hand-to-hand combat. Yeah, more dense. Um, but the, the reason we want to do that is, is like, I mean, we're going to lead distribution still. Like we're going to push harder on distribution. I'm just saying my main focus, like we have a team of four people. So like one or two people are going to purely focus mm-hmm. on the product and re- launch the redesign, launch more distribution. But I'm focusing on this more specific product, which requires me to go into meetings with other CEOs and founders yeah. and kind of be like, hey, look, this is the product. This is what we want to do. And I want to get learnings essentially. I want to spend the next two months kind of see if there's a market for this, because I think the market for that type of product is actually much, much bigger. And that that's where your exit or exit value can come from. Like right. B2B deals. Because they're not going to, once you get that client, they're never leaving, basically. Yeah, essentially. Like these, these enterprise. Yeah, yeah, enterprise clients are much more attentive. And if you can get one or two really quickly, that's really good feedback. But it's a much more upfront sales process. Yeah, it's, a, it's hand-to-hand combat. Yeah. That's literally it. So how, would, how do people in build space or these other people starting their own SaaS with no distribution, what are like the best ways to market a SaaS? Um, so, but there's like so outside many of content, like, yeah, give me like three or four. I'm like actually really curious outside of content. Yeah. If you, if you don't have a content creator, influencer, someone to push it organically, are people running Facebook ads? Are they using, so I have never read any ads for music fire for okay. any, so I, I can't talk about ads, but what I can talk about is like, if you can get other people to have a reason to share your product, Affiliates, basically. Yeah. So I think that 
I feel like it's a huge unlock. Like, people don't really realize it until they kind of do it. Even uh, my friend Musa, who does like the, mm-hmm. he has his info product. As soon as he launched uh, affiliates on his info product, it like 3 x mm-hmm. So it's like, affiliates actually have a huge power. And people people have like a frown, like reason to use it. They don't really use it that often. And I, I wonder why. But I think affiliates is a huge one. If you can understand affiliates and provide someone a reason to share your product, right. that's a big thing. If you can understand like what a good product looks like and feels like for most people, like for example, uh, early on we've seen like a bunch of these AI products that kind of are like super jank and they have a bunch of bugs. And mm-hmm. if you actually just make a simple, really good product that actually does what it mm-hmm. intends to do, you'll have good distribution just by people talking about it. Right. So that's like the other thing. So it's like affiliates and having a good product. And I would say the other thing is like even on LinkedIn and like having really cool de- demo videos. Like for example, one of the demo videos that I released on Twitter, it got like four thousand likes. Was uh, I took my voice and I would I would just like hum a rhythm into the, the microphone and I would convert it into mm. an instrument. So it'd be like voice to instrument, like voice to trumpet or voice wow. to, and it went super viral on Twitter. It got like 4,000 likes and wow. stuff like that. So very viral demos are really cool too. So you have, if you have a novel idea and you can express it in a demo and to show people a cool use case. Yeah, the first demo I did to launch in the AI Hub was I took my voice and I was like, hey, you mu- might be wondering why I sound like Drake right now. And then the second, a second later, I was like, now I sound like Ariana Grande. And I replaced my voice to sound like Drake nice. and Ariana Grande. And it hooked people in, right? Like, they're like, okay, cool. What is this product? product? Yeah, I saw Metaverse do this, an Instagram page. We did a really good job of, like, talking like that. And it wouldn't, I think, yeah, like, 30 yeah. million views overnight. So the, it's like, just create really good demos. That's one thing. If you can't, if you don't have content creators and all that, just if you can create demos, if you can get affiliates, and if you can just build a good product, you can kind of get out there really quickly. You just need, like, this critical mask. And then if you have the right pieces in place it can yeah people 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 like for example now like a lot of our content we don't do ourselves like like we have 10 or 20 youtube videos that we didn't make like big content creators just made because our product was good and Mm. and also the affiliate link kind of just pushed them over the edge to share it okay dude i've learned so much already in this hour this is awesome so thank you where can people find you just right Uh, now they can find me on my twitter um arib k24 and then on my instagram arib k7 a r i b or ARIBK7, yeah. And we're actually hiring right now. Oh, yeah? Uh, Where do they go? So if you're a content creator, just hit me up on Instagram. Or Are you Instagram. hiring content creators in-house? Yeah. So we're working on something that requires like a bunch of content creators to create mm. content about our product. Mm. We're doing something similar to Oliver uh, from Tech. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Dude, he that was like, he shared the sauce yeah. on that one. So shout out to him because that's the strategy of 2023. But so you're hiring content, like, you're like basically just like in a discord group and you're gonna say hey make content on this subject are they gonna be affiliates or are you actually gonna pay them like We're, we so we so what we do is we take our biggest affiliates and kind of just give them like monthly or weekly salaries gotcha. yeah cool and so you're also trying to create a personal brand for yourself yeah why i think like in the next like five years if you have like a personal brand you can kind of sell anything that's why you see all these influencers sell like like info products like info products yeah. have like no cost almost like almost no cost yeah, yeah. And then they can just sell them for an infinite amount of, infinite amount of time. I think for me, I kind of want to use it as a ability to kind of launch products really quickly and have like that first zero to one very quickly. Mm-hmm. So if you have a, if you have your personal brand and let's say I have like 10, 20,000 followers and I'm like, hey, I'm launching this product. You kind of already have a guaranteed 5, 10K users, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. So that's that's my reason. Also, just like it kind of gets you other things in terms of branding and, and distribution. Like you can talk to other people. 100%. Yeah. And it kind of gives you like you kind of very clearly can provide value to someone. <laughs> like yeah. That's what George was explaining it as. Like if I walk into a room, literally just at any moment, if I say, hey, come on the channel, it's like instant value add to so people kind of want to like work with you, work with you and it's easier yeah. out the gate and they, there's no words needed. So yeah. it is a superpower. And yeah, I can, we can launch any product, get like a testing pool right out the gate. So huge advocate of personal brand, obviously over here. Yeah. But I do say, I would say that courses are probably one of the best business models, but you do kind of have to earn the right to sell a course. Like you can't just like just make up a course. Like yeah. you have to practice and do something, but you're definitely in the position where you can. I don't think I'm going to do a course, but like my idea is like, I want to create a, a community of like content yeah. creators, like these distributors mm-hmm. and these devs and kind of just help them make products and then kind of just take a percentage in these products. Kind of like, kind of like what build space is doing in a way. Yeah. Build space doesn't take the percentage. Oh, okay. Yeah, Are so they going to, though? Like, come they, on. Like, they, 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 the they don't plan on right now. Like, as how, do you have any idea how those monetize? I guess you probably yeah, shouldn't so comment on it. Actually, but. no. Like, I used to work there. So before, yeah. we were actually the world's biggest Web3 developer ecosystem. Mm. And so we got paid, like, millions of dollars a year by, like, hey, to deploy this node, use Quick Node, or, mm-hmm. hey, use build this like on Solana. Consulting? 
No, 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 like as in like a, we education. Would have, yeah, education as in like okay, if you're gonna build a, a NFT project, build it on Solana, and we'd have courses on how to build stuff on Solana. Mm. And Solana would pay us like mm. half a million dollars and stuff like that. I want to talk to them because we did something very similar. Yeah, so we, we that was what Build Space was, and then we did, pivoted away from Web three towards AI, and then now just towards any project. And like the idea is like anyone's gonna be able to like we're gonna figure out a business model in the future. I think that's the goal. But the main business model right now is like we're getting paid by. Uh, governments and subsidized to have subsidized education for like the highest performing people, right? Mm. So it's like a private school for like the best of the best. So it's application based. Yeah. Basically. So we, we're having they're having in houses in house um, a private. So we have like in San Francisco we have an actual campus which hosts thirty students every year. Or every, oh, every three there? months. Yeah, three for three Whoa. months. Yeah, for three months. That's cool. So we just did the first batch. We're about to do batch two, and it's completely free for the students. The government pays. So th that's the plan. And now they're going to oh. launch one in Dubai, but the online program is free. So it's and like a real school for entrepreneurs. Yeah. That's like my passion right there. So that's awesome to hear. Yeah. I want to talk to them. That's really cool. Okay. So I want to go back to the course thing because I actually, s Russell Brunson, you know who Russell Brunson is? Click I've funnels, heard of ClickFunnels? Yeah. Okay. Every developer, if you're trying to learn marketing, Russell Brunson is the only book you need to read, uh, Dot Com Secrets. But his fourth book, The Lynchpin, he started ClickFunnels, the billion dollar company from zero to a billion in four years, I believe. Yeah. And how he did that was combining SaaS in courses. And so to market his SaaS platform, he created a course on how to run your business. Yeah. Then within the course, it's his software. That's essentially what we were doing at BuildSpace, but we were pushing all this traffic towards like Solana and these bigger companies. That makes a lot yeah. of sense. So it's like if you had your own crypto and you were pushing like, hey, here's how to build the best NFT project right now. And it's pushing to your own chain. Mm -hmm. like that's like the same. Thing. That's what we did, but yeah. we didn't own Ethereum. <laughs> <laughs> but think about drop shipping with Shopify. Yeah. Like Shopify, I don't know if they came up with the term drop shipping, but now there's a million people who sell drop shipping courses, 100%. and every one of them Shopify. And yeah. now their affiliate system is going crazy. Yeah, I think, I think their affiliate is like five hundred dollars per or something like that. It's I think it's yeah yeah I know what you're talking about yeah, yeah. it's crazy because I'm like talking to like some really big drop shipping people and they're like dude like that's how we make our real money <laughs> I'm yeah, like that, that's, shit. That, that's the sauce for most people yeah but they they've been around for so long they make so much money that they can pay like the entire LTV up front to affiliates yeah know? but I just think that's a really big unlock for a lot of people trying to get into SaaS is that like I think a lot of people have a stigma on selling courses but the smartest thing you can do as a SaaS company is sell a course teach people a business opportunity. And your SaaS is just like conveniently placed as a way to execute that business, basically. 100%. So yeah. I think that's really smart marketing. But okay, I do want to ask you now. I, so we kind of are asked you like how the landscape has changed over the last eight months with yeah. AI. How do you see the next, like, how have you seen your approach to this stuff change as you've gone through as an entrepreneur? Uh, like in terms of building products and stuff? Yeah, like when you just started out, you really didn't know this was happening. What is like, how have your priorities changed? I think I've come to realize like there's a lot of hard decisions you have to make. Yeah. That's like part of it. I uh, built space. There was like a, like I learned a lot from Farza. Farza gave me the saying, he was like, hey, if you have a decision, like decision A and decision B that someone gives you, uh, most of the time as a founder, your, your job is to make a decision, like pick A or B. Mm -hmm. But when, you, when, you've get, when you're given two choices, your brain hype, like thinks like, okay, I have to make a choice. But sometimes you just have to ask yourself, why can't we do both? Mm -hmm. And like stuff like that, there was things that I had to learn where like sometimes I, like your brain kind of just convinces you like you have to make a choice, but why not do both? And then your job as a founder is like figure out how to get the supplies to do both. Uh, the other thing is like if you don't m make decisions, you don't move at all. You're kind of stagnant. That was another big thing. We spent a lot of time kind of learning how to scale as well. Mm -hmm. Like when you scale, when you scale your product from like 10 users to 100 users, it's like a huge thing. Like you have to actually figure out how to supply 100. Like for example, we were using G we're on, we run on GPUs. So we had a, we had this problem constantly of like okay we have ten thousand hundred thousand requests today like people did a hundred thousand conversions today how are we gonna get enough compute for that so it's like solving a bunch of these problems on the fly while your product is out there puts this added pressure on how you. do you yeah so it's like the, the like the fact that your product will die if you don't solve them mm -hmm. kind of makes you solve those problems <laughs> yeah. you know so it's like okay I mean tomorrow we're not gonna make any money if we don't have more computers so how, like you're gonna figure out a way to find more computers is that I'm not a technical person, but is that just AWS? Like you're just like we don't use AWS. Okay. We use Model. Model essentially like normally some people will pay for GPUs. Let's say like I want ten A100s. Yeah. Uh, do you know any A100s? Yeah, NVIDIA's graphics. Yeah, it's, right. Like really big GPUs. But the problem with that is like let's say you're only using five at a time. Sometimes at, at night you're using eight, and then sometimes you're using three. So you're not utilizing ninety nine percent of it. So then there's a thing called serverless, which kind of essentially let's say you're right now you're having fifty requests, so we'll spin mm. up one GPU. Let's say it needs three more GPUs, so we'll just spin them up, and when they're they're done being used, it spins them down. So that's what we use. 
Easy. So we utilize our compute. Okay, that makes smart. Yeah, Thank you. Serverless for that. GPUs. Serverless. Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's just go into all the software that you use to run your company now. All the like internal tools you're using, communication, organization, everything. Awesome. Yeah, we use Discord still. For, nice. For me like too. Internal, <laughs> yeah. internal stuff. But I would say there's a a bunch of cool tools that I recommend. One is Posthog. Posthog is by far the best analytical tool out there, and it's open source. Uh, I would recommend using it if you if you have any product, even if it's not even a software product. You can it's one line of code that you add to your your site, and you can see heat maps, like video recordings of what your users are doing. You can see where they are in the world, what device they're they're on, like a bunch of these analytics. How do you spell that? Post. Post. P O S T H O H O G. Post hog. Okay. Post hog. Really cool company. Uh, I would recommend using them. Then we also use Retool. Retool essentially what it does is you have a database that has like your users or your conversions or your subscriptions and a retool can make really nice graphs of what information is in your database. So you can see mm -hmm. how many new users you gained, how many new subscriptions you gained and all that. Retool. Retool. We just moved from Stripe to Paddle. Paddle is a different POS system. The reason we moved from Stripe to Paddle was we were seeing that uh, we, we couldn't accept payments in, pa uh, in PayPal. And PayPal is a huge thing worldwide. Payments are done a lot through PayPal and we couldn't accept mm. that. So we moved from Stripe to Paddle. And because of that, we've seen like 20 to 30% increase in subscription conversions. Wow. Yeah, so Paddle is another. Just P-A-D-D-L-E? P-A-D-D-L-E.com, Paddle.com. Uh, they're actually built on top of Stripe, but they just add more features. Um, oh, so okay. So, you're, so Tolt still works for you then? Yeah, Tolt still. And Tolt actually has, they have two options. They have Stripe and they have Paddle. So they have both options. Mm. Um, so yeah, I would, I would use that. I would use Superbase for your database. Superbase is like a really good type of format for your database. You can see your tables really cleanly. Um, yeah, so that's is what that like I an Airtable competitor, um, Superbase, or Superbase is like literally like a pure SQL database, but it's like all hosted in like a nice way. Gotcha. Um, yeah, kind of, kind of Airtable is more like a ta actual tables, but okay. Superbase is actual database. But you can see as in table format like Airtable. Gotcha. Um, and then yeah, I would say there's a couple of other ones. Um, I think the those are the main few that I use every single day. And then like for productivity, I use like Cron. Cron is like a great calendar app. I use, um, Cron is great for calendars. And I, then I also use Superhuman. Yep. Um, Superhuman email. is like the fucking greatest tool. Email, email. Yeah. And it's like, that's what you call a great product. So like, um, there's a saying that uh, someone once told me, was, and I, he, I was like, hey, what's the difference between a great product and a good product? And it was like a great product is something that if I give to you and I take it back, you're gonna fight to have it back. And a good product is like, if I take from you, and have I take it back? You're just gonna, you're gonna complain once, and that's it. Mm. Like superhuman is something that if you take from me, I'm gonna I'm gonna fight to have it back, <laughs> right? Like I can't go back to normal email. So superhuman. What's your favorite part about it? I just think the simplicity, like the the ability to see if so other people have seen your emails, uh, the ability to kind of just send emails on the fly, like it's not a text message, like all that is just like, and the whole interface. I'm so used to it now, uh, and accepting meetings online online really quickly, all that. Can you turn off? On the other side, if people can see if you opened them, like on text, you can turn off read receipts. Uh, y you probably can. Like it's in the settings. I okay. Assume. Okay. But I, I, I know on Superhuman you can see when other people open your emails and mm -hmm. exactly what time. That's my favorite thing about it. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's great. I always wonder. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> just a, it it's a pixel. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. Okay, any more you can think of? Um, I don't think there's anything else, but I, like I would a CRM say CRM at all. Um, I guess you're a software company. That is important. We, we use Customio though as our CRM. Okay. Customio kind of just anytime someone signs up, we send them an email. Like, hey, yeah. Blah, blah. Automations. Yeah, Customio is it's quite expensive though. But I would say like the the best tool by far in all of them, if I were to rank it, is use Tolt. Tolt is the best affiliate tool, and I just think one of the best software tools you can use for any product. And then I would say Postdoc is second best because you get so much data on your product, and to make your product better, you need all that data. And that's just for anyone who doesn't understand, just. You put a, one piece of code on your website and you can see where, pe like you said, heat map. You can see where people are clicking. And so wherever their mouse hovers the most, it'll turn like a certain yeah, color. It will literally give you a screen recording of their entire session. On, on Do they have side. to opt into that? Uh, no, no. <laughs> That's the coolest part. I can also see like literally like their address. Like I can see everything. <laughs> like it's, it is wild stuff. How is that legal, dude? So That's Postdoc, it's, it's just like cookies, right? It's yeah, yeah. like you agree all, to all these companies, accept, but. all these companies like have this data on you, which is, yeah. and when you see other people's data, then it's like, like you're like, holy shit. Like other companies have this much data on me. On you for everything yeah, you're doing on every it's website. Wild, yeah. I, this was my major in college and it blows my mind that people don't understand this, but yeah. it's like how you make really accurate decisions. So, yeah. okay. Now, the last question I always ask people is basically, what's like the number one thing that you've learned that you think is true now that you didn't think was true in the past? Um, I think the number one thing that I've learned 
that's true now is if you kind of just stay consistent at something, something will end up kind of working. I remember in, in, in middle school, I would spend a lot of time just kind of like figuring out what I wanted to do. And I, I knew I wanted to build something really big. I just didn't know what. Mm-hmm. So I started with a clothing brand. I started just selling chocolates. And then in high school, I started like a, I, I, the first product I did was an info product. It was like a, a discord for people. Really? Yes. Yeah, sh- nice. Trading stocks. Like I was, hey, $50 a month and, and we can be in this discord. And every time the thing that I did kind of got bigger and bigger. And sometimes there were fallbacks, but I would get back twice as twice as bigger the next time. So it's like just consistently doing something. Uh, you're, you're kind of going to figure it out. That's what I've realized. Like if you just keep kind of going at it, no matter what, you'll figure it out. So this is the compounding effect. Yeah. It's just like, I think it's more reps. I think the saying that I use is like, uh, success is 80% consistency and 10% luck and 10% skill. Like nice. if you're kind of just consistent, yeah. uh, like you're going to get more lucky and you're going to get more skillful. And, and it'll trend Eventually, up. yeah. But the biggest thing is just consistency. I think that's really important for a lot of people, especially young people. I think a lot of young people are like, have this like deep, like need, they need it now. Yeah. And so they think that if they're only at 20K. Bro, I like started, like I started this when I was 15, if you really think crazy. about it. Right? Like I had to learn all those mistakes uh, to get to where I am now. That's absolutely crazy. Okay, so I'm introducing a new question I saw from Tom Bil- Bailu. I think it's like you say his name, Tom Bilyeu. Um, someone starting into the AI SaaS world today. What is some, what are they going to run into? What problems are they going to run into? What mistakes are they going to hit if they just start today blind? Yeah, I think if you're not a dev and you have no like thoughts around that, then you're going to not know what to like what your, how your product works. And that's like the biggest flaw for most people. So you need to understand how your product works on like a low level at least. Like mm-hmm. how what's an API? What's your gonna what's your cost going to be? Uh, how are you going to get users? And if you can kind of understand those, you can kind of build on top of that. But that's like one of the biggest problems I've seen for even the people that kind of have distribution and have a dev, like they actually don't understand their own product. Like the two other people know more about their product than them. And you're supposed to be a PM if you think, right? Mm-hmm. So the, I would sp- say spend a lot more time kind of just understanding like on a low level, maybe not like coding, but like there's a thing called pseudo code, which is just like actually understanding how the code kind of works together and how the product kind of works together. And, and that that's going to be a lot, lot more helpful. And I, I think that that's going to be a huge problem for a lot of people because people won't do that. They'll kind of just try to streamline through. And that's going to be the, like a big flaw once their product has like tens of thousands of users and the, they actually don't know how their authentication works and why there's a bug because like, mm-hmm. they can't actually think of why. They kind of just cruise through the steps without actually understanding the first yeah. principles of why. Yeah, speed is speed is a, it's a double-edged sword. Like you'll be able to get out there really quickly and, and that's good. But sometimes if you actually don't understand what you're building, like to the, the T, like in terms of low level, you're not going to be able to solve the problems that you're going to have as things get bigger and bigger. Okay. Last, last, last final question for real. Who do, who do you learn from? Um, so this, this is like really random, but every night I spend listening to like a podcast or like a book about someone. Right now I'm reading Sam Walton, founder of Walmart. And Love how that book. How he scaled up Walmart. I took a Southwest flight today and I was like, okay, I'm going to just look up the founder of Southwest. And like his <laughs> story is insane as well. So it's always just like listening to like people that have kind of led huge teams and done huge things. Uh, and every night I listen to a story. And the, the cool thing about that is like, I'll go to sleep and I'll literally imagine that I'm in their position and kind of like carrying out their story like in their eyes. And it's super cool. You kind of learn from all these mistakes from people that have that made mistakes at the highest level and also had successes at the highest level. And it's kind of ingrained into your mind and how to, how to make decisions and how to think. That might be my favorite thing you said all podcasts. That's awesome. Do you follow a specific podcast or you literally seek the big story, like big company so successes? So I, I, I do. So in, in the daytime, I'll listen to like big company stories and like, like Sam Walton and like Sam Altman, all these big guys, right? Yeah. But at nighttime, I'll spend purely on history. So like mm. big military leaders, um, like for example, Salahuddin is like a big one for me, mm-hmm. who was like a military leader for Whoa. for the Interesting. Ayyubis, uh, dynasty. Like these military leaders are also great because they kind of t- show you how, like in their, in their time, they're like considered business leaders, right? Mm-hmm. Because there was no real business back then. There was like only pure war. And like how you come to the top of that is like also a great story. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I find them more amusing as well. So um, those are those are some things I listen to. Every day. Okay. Well, man, I learned so much. Thank you so much for coming out here and sharing. Arab, where can they find you one more time? Uh, they can find me on my Instagram at arabk7 and then on my Twitter, arabk24. All right, guys, watch this podcast multiple times through because you're going to absorb it the second, third time much more. And he shared so many little details that are extremely valuable and the most up-to-date information in 2024. So shout out to him. Go follow him on social media. Everybody have a wonderful day. See you next time.